number is, you know, x is the, where you put the number? Where you put the number? The input. So this is the name, and this is the input. It goes in for x. Okay, so uh, my function could be 3x minus 7. Okay, that could be a function. Functions can be lots of different things. Here's an example. So one thing that we could do is that. Uh, what does that mean in function notation? Does that mean that it would end up being 5 equals 3, and then the x would be 5 minus 7? 5 equals 3, you said? Like, and then when you like, write it out, it's like 5 equals, and then you put the 5 in for x. You three. put the 5 in for x? Yeah. So. We say this f of 5, f of 5. The function f, uh, whatever, f of 5, uh, the function f uh, when x is 5, okay? So that's 3 minus 5 minus 7, that's 15 minus 7, that's uh, eight. Okay. And we're done. Okay. The important thing here is f is not a variable. You're not trying to solve for f. You're not trying to figure out what f is. So it's not anything other than what? The name of the function. It's not a variable. It's not a thing you're trying to figure out what it is. It's just the name of the function. Okay. So the function f when x is 5 is worth 8. Okay. The value of the function when x is 5 is so this says a lot of things. I had to say a lot of words to convey what this is saying. That's why we use function notation, because it's a lot shorter when we understand what it's saying. So f of 5 is 8, meaning when I put 5 in for x in the function called f, I get 8 as the result, or as the output. So there's one thing. Uh, let's use the same function. And if I say that f of x equals uh, 14, Is that the same as f of 5? Well, a couple different ways it's not the same thing. It's for one, that's 14 and not 5, right? And what's the difference between where 5 is and where 14 is? Yeah? 5 and 14. Okay, so this means put x is 5. Put 5 in for x. Does this mean put 14 in for x? No, because 14 is not in the place of x, right? That's not what this is conveying. It's just saying that the function, the whole thing, the whole function f is 14. What does that mean? Can someone put that in different words? Jamie. And you should get 14. You should get 14. Not put in 14, but whatever you put in, you get 14. Okay. So get, get 14. What do you do to get 14? Do 3x minus 7, 3 times some number x minus 7, and that'll give you 14. So we need to solve for x. What's x going to be? Well, we add 7, we get 21, 3x, divide by 3 on both sides, and x is 7. Um, one more thing that this f of x thing could be. one example, we could plug something in for 5. We could say that we should get something for y, for the output, or we could just say graph this function. Okay. If we're going to graph f of x equals 3x minus 7, it's the same as y equals 3x minus 7. Okay. f of x, y, they serve the same purpose, they're just written differently. Okay. They both stand for what you get out of the function, what the output is. So whether you think of it as graphing f of x equals 3x minus 7 or y equals 3x minus 7, how do you do that? You, it's just like, uh, you go on the y-axis, uh -huh. you go down 7. Go down 7 on the y-axis, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, because
So that's our y intercept. And then up three and over one. Up three and over one. Up <coughs> three over one. That's our slope. There we go. So f of x function notation, not a whole lot different than y equals, so let's give it a name, tells you what the input is, and then we ask for things a little differently. If I want you to put something in for x, you just write this. Rather than, if I had something like this without function notation, instead of saying, plug in 5 for x and tell me what you get for y, I just say f of 5 because I'd ask the same question. Other questions from function notation stuff? Other questions in general? If it was a negative 3 instead of a positive 3, do you think that line would look different than this, the graph of this line? So just answer that question. Do you think that the line, if we put a negative 3 in front of that, do you think it would look different from when 3 is positive? Okay. So then you said, if it's negative, does that mean we go down and to the left? Right? So let's, let's do that. Let's start here and go down 3 and to the left 1. That gives me a point down here, that's about the same. We could start at this point too. Down three into the left one, it's the same, right? So let's just change it to y equals negative three x uh, minus seven. So seven on the y-axis, and so what does it mean? So it's really helpful to write, if it's just a, a number, like a nice round number, it's always helpful to write it over one, right? Negative three is the same as negative three divided by one, right? But now it looks like rise over run. So now if we do this rise over run, we'll go down three, and then what? down three because it's a negative three, and then what? To the right one. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Does that help? So if you have a slope like negative three or five or two or whatever, always help to write it over one so that that over one reminds you what you're supposed to do for the the run part of it, okay? And just a reminder that um, this would be the same as if we thought of it as three over negative one, because then we could then go up three into the left one. Up three into the left one, we give me that point right there, and still it makes the same slope and same angle of the line. Work together and make it up. Okay, so if we're going to get slope intercept form, that means get y by itself. So the equation we make up right now should not have y by itself. And we need some fractions in there. Now that's just, you know, we can make it as crazy as possible. It's all going to be the same kind of a thing each time. So, does somebody want to <coughs> help me out with the equation that we need to solve for y that has fractions involved? Just four okay, just four fifths. Right. So to get it in slope intercept form means to get it looking like this. Clearly, we can see y is by itself. We can get y by itself. Okay. So <coughs> we 
to start somewhere. What's something we could do to get Y by itself? Subtract 3 fourths x from both. It's great. It's 3 fourths x minus 3 fourths x is 0. And over here is just 3 fourths x minus 3 fourths x. Okay. Make sure you don't try and combine these. They're not like terms. You can't put constants together with variables like that. Okay. They just have to stay separate. So I just like to put the x first. Negative 3 fourths x plus 4 fifths. Now is just not going to take a whole lot to get y by itself. How are you going to get y by itself? Multiply by the reciprocal. Multiply by the reciprocal. So if you got a fraction times y, if you multiply by the reciprocal of a fraction, it cancels it out. What does that mean? If you multiply this by the reciprocal of one half, what does it mean it cancels it out? What does it become? Yeah? One y. Becomes one y. That's perfect. Yes, it becomes one y. And we come over here, we multiply by the reciprocal of one half, which is 2 over 1. So we do the same thing to both sides. All I need to do is remember to distribute the 2 over 1 to both of these things. Okay? How do we multiply fractions? Straight across. Good. So 2 times 3, well, this is a, it's a, a positive 2 times a negative fraction, so we'll do a negative fraction. 2 times 3 is 6. 1 times 4 is 4. That's x. Negative 6 fourths x. Uh, 2 times 4 is 8. 1 times 5 is 5. Then we get to simplify this fraction. Negative 3 halves. x plus 8 fifths. Is that very exciting? What is that? It's not very nice. Anyways. Okay. How was that? Good? Helpful? Sarah? Yeah? Other questions? Happy that we get to do this again. Four, our best possible. 